I don't know any nurses or public sector workers on 30 odd grand using food banks. Uh, and if they are, I mean, my colleague Simon Clark was quite right. If they are, they probably need some budgeting skills. And- Look, I mean, you, you you put up a post about a member of your, your staff, a, a junior member of your staff, um, and I won't name her for reasons which will become clear, but what was the point you were making? Just take me through it. So, obviously, over the past 24 hours, I've seen some more nonsense being, being spouted out through the media about, um, you know, nurses, or not just nurses, but people on 30-odd grand having to use food banks. We've seen the story a few weeks back about nurses stealing leftover scraps of food from, from patients' plates. I'm calling this nonsense out, John. It is nonsense. And, and, and I came into work this morning, I spoke to Katie, we were talking about this, and she says, you know what? I'm a single young person living in London, paying nearly 800 quid a month for rent. I have to pay my travel costs. I've got a student loan. I've got all the other costs. I'm on less than 30 grand. And I'm not using a food bank. I'm okay. And uh, and more important, she's actually saving a hundred pound a month. And, you know, she wants to just put that away for you know in the future when she decides to buy her own house, whenever that is. I mean, that's really difficult at the moment. But here's a young lady who's earning way less than the thirty-five, forty grand a year what, what some people earn in the public service, and she's coping. Right, and that and that was the point you were you were making. Yeah. Um, and just her circumstances, you set out some of her circumstances in your in your tweet. Just take me through that, because it's the basis of your argument. Well, I mean, it, I said, shall we put down your single? Because she is, because then, you know, people automatically come back, well, you've got a partner, or you've got children, or, you know, there's somebody else supporting you. But it's not. She's just a single young lady, um, earning not a great salary in London. We're restricted what we can pay. Um, and, and she's coping. She's not using the food bank. And yeah. this nonsense I keep uh, hearing... Um, I mean, especially in my constituency, I don't know any nurses or public sector workers on 30-odd grand using food banks. Mm. Uh, and if they are, I mean, my colleague Simon Clark was quite right. If they are, they probably need some budgeting skills. Mm. And, and just remind ourselves that many, many years ago, I worked in Sinton's Advice Bureau for, for a long, long time, dealing with people who were, who were struggling. And the first thing we actually did when they came in with debt or, or problems was do a, an income and expenditure form, and I, we did that every single day for thousands. Of- now your staffer um, lives in a single room in London. That was right. That was part of the yeah. the, the thing yeah. that you put up on your on your tweet, and pays rent on that single room um, apartment. How much rent is she paying? It's nearly eight hundred quid. Nearly yeah, eight hundred hundred quid. And you say she's earning less than thirty thirty grand, and she takes a foreign holiday every year. Yeah. Um, and there's been a lot of blowback about that. Just just tell me briefly about that. Yeah, there's been some really nasty comments uh, about her family, where she's from, where she was educated, uh, that she could get a better job than working for a nasty old Tory MP. But that's her choice. I mean, I mean, the young lady, she chooses to live in London. She could probably get a, a better job so somewhere else in the rest of the country and have, uh, have more money, more disposable income and, and have a better quality of life. But she makes that choice. A lot of young people do. But, I mean, my point is, John, it's not a complicated point I'm trying to make, is that here's a woman, a young woman, on not a great salary in London, and she cuts her cloth accordingly. Now, if she wants to earn more money, then the the trick is to get promoted or go and get another job. And and, and she's made that quite clear to me. She's, you know, she's got a plan. She tells me in in so many years' time she's going to have more money and and good luck to her. And that's, we've sort of lost that in, in society uh, you know, I was just always taught growing up that if you want more money, you, you work more more hours or you get a better job or you go back to college and, you know, and train and, and do a different job. And yeah. we need to we need to you know, remember that um, and not just keep saying I'm struggling. I need to go to a food bank. When quite frankly, um, a lot of this is not true. Uh, people on 30-odd grand should not be going to food banks. All right. I mean, you made a few strong statements here. I'm really sorry to hear about the abuse that your staffer yeah. has been getting. But that's, that's the nature of, of Twitter, but I, I know you've also had a, a lot of questioning of what it is you've been saying in your in your Twitter feed today. So let me put some of this some of this to you. Clearly, your your, your staffer does not have a family to feed. Lee, as you, as you said, doesn't have a mortgage, which for many people has yeah. gone up really significantly. Doesn't yeah. deal with maybe energy bills, which have trebled for a lot of people. I mean, that's the circumstances which you'll know. Surely, a lot of nurses are living with, and yeah. are you taking account of that because you don't. I think to a lot of people, you don't really seem to be taking account of that. Well, here you are then, John. So the NHS is the largest employer in Ashfield. And I hope you don't clip this. I hope you play the full lot. The NHS is the largest um, employer in Ashfield, over 6,000 people. 
that's my hospital where I was born. And I've not had one single nurse contact me to say they're using food banks or anything to do with the pay rise or the conditions or anything. They've not gone on strike. They're all working. Yes, they work incredibly hard. Yes, I want to see a fair deal for, for the NHS workers and the families. Of course I do. But the, you know, the, the nastiness is not Twitter. This yeah. is people. This is yeah. people on the left, Labour supporters, uh, the odd lunatic in there who, quite frankly, shouldn't be allowed on social media. But this is people who want to see the back of people like me. And, and yes, I've, I've used the young lady this morning with her permission. She was happy for it to go on. She wasn't expecting the backlash, although I did sort of pre-warn her. But, you know, yes, people do have high mortgages. People have high bills. People have high gas bills. We know that. But my point is, John, people, you know, the airports are packed. People are still going on holidays. The pubs are packed. The football grounds are packed. People are getting on with the life. And this nonsense that is constantly peddled through the media every morning is designed to get rid of people like me. You know that. I know that. Anybody who lives in the real world has got an ounce of, of common sense, knows what's going off. This is the unions putting... I mean, the leader of one of these unions was on Question Time the other week saying that nurses were stealing food off plates. Come on, John. This is nonsense. You know that and I know that. Now, Lee, when you say, and you've used the word lots of times, nonsense, about the accounts of people and nurses going to food banks... What do you mean? I mean, are you suggesting that those are lies, that that's fabricated? Uh, find, find me a nurse in Ashfield that's going to a food bank, and let's uh, now let me sit down with her, with you, on this show, and let me go through the finances of that family, and I'm sure I can help. Well, I mean, so there's another point, a question. You say that what's at fault on the, on the side of many nurses is financing, is budgeting, managing yeah. their, their money, which again gets me back to the, uh, to the point if you are a nurse, not like your staff, but a nurse with, with a couple of kids and a mortgage and soaring energy and food and food bills, they're the ones who are saying they simply cannot make ends meet. I mean, can you really say, Lee, that that's nonsense? Well, so a nurse, so somebody in London, uh, John, on if they decide to work 16 hours earning minimum wage, they will get universal credits for about 35, 40 grand a year. I mean, that's, I mean that, and that's tax free, not paying any sort of income tax on that. And that's the sort of money you can earn in this place. And I, and I appreciate that you need to earn that sort of money to live in a place like this. But, I mean, what is the answer, John? Do we just, uh, you know, do we say to people earning 35 grand, I tell you what, we're going to give you another five or six grand mm. pay rise, but people on 20-odd grand mm. in places like Ashfield are going to have to pay a little bit more out of their pocket through their income tax mm. to supplement your income. That's 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 the whole argument. We've yeah. got to be, have a system that's fair in this country that's fair on health workers, but fair on you know the other taxpayers as well. Because well you, you keep on nurses... saying you keep on saying um, thirty thirty five grand. A fully qualified nurse starts on something like twenty four thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah. And if that nurse yeah. has these bills so much higher than your 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 staffer, yeah. then they say they can't manage, and they insist they're going to food banks again. The Lee, last are you, Lee, if I may, Lee, is, are you no, saying no, no, that no, is it a lie to no, say that they're no, using food banks? No. Clearly, you, you can't be nonsense, saying that. John. You're talking nonsense. Tell me what. The last comp, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an MP. So if anybody in the health service, any employee, they come to me. Uh, the ones that come to you are usually shoved there by, by the unions uh, or the BBC or the Guardian or the Daily Mirror. The, 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 the plants, you know that. So the, the last complaint I got from a nurse is when I volunteered at the vaccination centre. And the complaint was to me, tongue in cheek, have a word with Rishi because I'm paying 40% tax. Now, I mean, the threshold for paying 40% tax is over 40 grand. Hmm. Um, she's retired now in her 50s. She's younger than me. She's retired on a decent pension and, and has a ni nice lifestyle. Look, I'm not saying that nurses can't budget. And what I'm saying is I don't believe they're going, you know, that, that they're stealing food off people's plates and they're using food banks to the extent we're being told through the media every single day. I think that's actually quite disrespectful mm. to nurses. So, like I say, show me these nurses that are using food banks and show me these nurses that are stealing scraps of food, leftover food from patients' plate. And mm. uh, seriously, John, who's believing this nonsense? Mm. In, a, in a nutshell, Lee, because I'm just keen to understand the point that you're making um, so forcefully, that you, you argue that nurses, they can manage perfectly well if they just handle their money better and the stories no, of I didn't, no, I didn't say that. No, I didn't no. say that. So, so, so there you go again. No, no, please so explain. It doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Whatever profession you know, it could be a nurse, a bin man, it can be a politician. I'm rubbish with my finances. My wife does my finances. I, you know, I'm absolutely useless. It doesn't matter, matter what profession you're in, what job you do. Some people can manage and budget and live within the means, and mm. some people can't. Right. What I don't believe is the point is I'm making, and I made it with a young lady this morning for my staff. Here's a young lady 
earning a lot less than what a nurse does. And, and let's be honest, there are single nurses in, in this area. Uh, there's a hospital across the way there at St. Thomas's who are in my staff, the same position, probably is a little bit older, uh, that are a lot better off. And if you're telling me that they're using food banks and, and stealing scraps of food off uh, patients' plates, then probably they need to come and spend, you know, half a day in my office and get some budgeting training. Right. And all of that talk of nurses in poverty using food banks, you think it is propaganda and, and in bald English terms, it's a lie. That's your argument. I can't believe in this day and age because uh, nurses, you know, they're on what, 35, 40 grand a year. Yes, you made the point about trade, uh, of unicorn. I get that. Yeah, they're not they do all lots right. of overtime. I know they do. And they work hard. They work long hours. You know, some do bank work, getting, you know, lots of money for, for weekend shifts or whatever. You know, if we're going to say that nurses are on the breadline, which is what the media is trying to do every day, if we're going to say that nurses are on the breadline, then sorry, then so are our soldiers, our sailors, our bin men, our council workers, our street cleaners, our window cleaners, our hospitality sector, our care sector. Everybody in the country must be, you know, under 35, 40 grand, must be living in poverty. And quite frankly, that's just rubbish. Yeah. And look, last one. And uh, a part of your argument earlier on, Lee, was, look, if you, you're not happy with what you're being paid in the job you're doing, get a better job, get a job with, with, with better pay. I mean, that's what a lot of nurses are doing. They're leaving the nursing profession in large numbers. Yeah. And you don't, you don't want nurses to leave, surely? No, I surely don't want, I don't want nurses to leave at all. You know, it's, I, I mean, the nurses keep saying, that, well, not the nurses, um, it's the unions keep saying it's not all about the pay. So it's not all about the pay, John. It's about the conditions. It's about it's about working long hours. It's about you know staff being off sick. It's about having to bring in uh, bank staff, which are not re regular staff. But the real conversation we need to have about the NHS and the nurses is how it's run. And and, and I'll, I've always said it's not fit for purpose. There is so much waste in the NHS. I think we spend a hundred and eighty billion pound a year, something like that, on it. And there's lots of scope for making savings. We've done it with councils. We've done it with police forces. Um, over the years, we, we need we need to start looking at, at managing the uh, the procurement, the finances, uh, the the way we waste money on on middle managers, diversity managers, or, or you know my my own hospital in Ashfield that was built on a PFI deal by Labour, and they paid seventy quid I think just to change a light bulb. It's it's they're paying a million pound a year on, you know, to pay the loan off. There's an hospital that should have cost three or four hundred million. That's going to cost us three billion. By the time we finish it, I mean that, that's the real crime here. Right. Uh, and let's not forget when 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 these unions are asking for outrageous pay rises, this is comes out of my pay pocket, comes out of my staffer's pay pocket, who's already you know struggling to make ends meet, like I say in London, but she's coping. Do you want my young staffer to to, to pay more income tax to to pay somebody who's on you know ten grand a year more more money? 